Hey guys, it's Bob Morielli here with the Tuning School, and on today's Tech Tuesday, I've got Dion Forbes. How you doing? Hey man, our newest Ford instructor, and we're going to be discussing the different generations of Ford ECMs. All right, guys, welcome back. So we're going to be discussing the different generation of Ford ECMs today, generations. And this is where I started, Dion. This what big, is that? That is Big <laughs> Bertha. Big Bertha. Her job since the 1980s was, well, we call her the Easy Bake Oven. Oh, man. She can, this, this is the deluxe model, people, okay? For those of you who are watching, do not know what this beauty is. This is one of my favorite tools of all times. This can bake probably 10 different chips at the same time. And it's an ultraviolet oven. And its job is to be the definition of tuning in the 80s. That's how I would describe this. Never so, seen this one before, but. <laughs> listen, if you were if you were not a big shot in the 80s, you had like a single eraser. You know, this this could just get you on the map, man. I've seen the single erasers, but not, yeah. not something this elaborate. Yeah, no, this is beautiful. <laughs> I like it, it's 20 pounds. Um, its job is to expedite the tuning process. So back in the 80s, we had very simple stuff we were tuning, right? So basic computers, and I'm talking 102 sensor, we're talking OBD1, uh, basically like one mass airflow table, uh, one spark table, no variable cam controls, nothing crazy. I mean, basically it's a fancy carburetor that kind of knew what was going on. Okay. And the only way to tune them was to take the chip out, physically remove it from the carrier, and then plug it into here and erase it with an ultraviolet light. And it took about 10 minutes in the easy bake oven. Okay. Now, now I like that, because that's just my, that's my pace, right? <laughs> but I would do 10 chip changes at a time with alterations, like two more degrees, two more degrees, two more degrees, you know gotcha. what I mean? Yep. So it's all about efficiency, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So this essentially was what Ford tuning, GM tuning, all of those really were back in the 80s. And then all the way up to about 96 when OBD2 happened. And that's kind of a big, big jump for us because yeah. that OBD2 became flash programmable. She went away. She's been in storage since 96. Uh, but on looks, the upside, looks good. it looks good. <laughs> it does look good. You started to see more engines like dual overhead cam engines, single overhead cam engines, stuff like that for Fords. Your four sixes, five fours start to come out. And I'm basically talking about 96 to 04. Okay. Is the range that I'm talking about. And they had a little more controls, but still nothing that I would call super fancy. Yeah. But you could flash it. Yeah. And definitely. you could scan it. Scanning was way better on those. <laughs> way better. We used to get like at one frame every second when we would scan OBD1 stuff. It was slow. It was painful. <laughs> the good news is on the Fords back then, I mean, that was really only like zero to, I don't know, 15 miles an hour. It really didn't accelerate that fast. So you weren't missing a lot. All right, so basically kind of wrapping up the stone ages of EFI tuning in the Ford world. Your era. My era, <laughs> which I identify with. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. It's true. Um, but Dion's got to take over from here. He's going to walk us through what, like the 05-ish to 10s? 05 to 10, which I believe was the Spanish Oak era. <laughs> Sounds right. Um, that's where you actually cared about your torque tables, where you could actually adjust them. And <laughs> from beginning to end, um, you had drive by wire, not actual wire, just a signal being sent from your throttle, throttle position sensor or from your throttle pedal to your throttle body. Um, so they replaced the physical cable. Yeah, so they replaced that's the physical. That's a big upgrade. Yeah, so definitely, um, I mean, it's a weight reduction for Ford, so it helped them close the gap on that list. <laughs> I mean, they're not there yet, of course, but yeah. Yeah, and then we just took over. Oh, so, wow, we're they, not to that generation yet, bro. <laughs> you, you keep going with that. But, um, so variable cam timing started to come into play there where you can actually manipulate a cam as to different stages of what the car was doing. Um, that era was still a little, hit or miss, they, they still needed a lot more refinement there, which is where the uh, Copperhead era comes in, which is the 11 and up. Okay. And, uh, or, or 11 through 14, I should say. Okay. Um, 11. But starting in 11, you would say there's been a big improvement or a big change. Yeah, that, that was, I would say, what got Ford to where they are today, as far as just being able to take and put factory widebands in cars. So now you have the full ability to, to tune a car from beginning to end. You don't no longer need to 
crawl okay. underneath the car, hook up a wide band or any of that good stuff. Um, full variable cam timing. And now you... That's big. Yeah, it, it, it was a big step yeah. for, for Ford and helped propel them to where they are today. I mean, the only improvement they could have made it was by actually going to LS at the same time, but... Why would they want to go slower? Oh, oh wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. All right, so huge improvements started really in 11 for Fords. Definitely, um, multiple spark tables, multiple torque tables, um, still drive by wire, but now you also had a lot more, uh, you had a lot more to play with in the car that made the car what it is. Okay. You know, and then it got more advanced, 15. 15 and up. 15 How many spark up. tables do we have now? 27. Wow. Okay, and why do we need 27 spark tables? Um, because you're adjusting spark tables in individual parameters of the MAF or, okay. or whatever the case may be, or load. So load areas. meaning like, uh, say so, the cams are at a certain spot. Exactly, so the cams are at a certain spot. Um, idle, you're adjusting your spark tables there. Wide open throttle, you're adjusting your spark tables there. So it's a big change, whereas you just normally adjusted one table and that was it. Right, so, so even more refinement, more control all the way around. Yeah, and which makes for a better tune. Yeah, so twin independent variable cam control sounds to me like a huge improvement in the world of Fords, along with wide bands. Definitely. Kind of all at the same time. So, so when, are, um, when are the GMs putting wide bands in their cars? So I don't know that we need that level of refinement <laughs> in a oh, GM. Okay. Uh, that might be out there. I think that, I know the C8s have it. Uh, the Copperhead era was somewhat, you had flex fuel abilities okay. in there because of the wide bands being in the vehicle. So, so tuning one of those for E85 or Flex is much easier than it could have been. Correct. Should yes. it not have had wide bands and a good ECM to go with it. 100%. percent. Yeah. yeah. So that's all the time we have for today's Tech Tuesday. Awesome job, Dion. All right. Thank you for having me. Thank you guys for watching. For more information, follow us on social media. As always, stay tuned. How you want to land the plane? <laughs> Titanic. <laughs> it sunk. <laughs> we don't have icebergs in Florida, so we had that. <laughs> Large gators. <laughs> and I like turtles. Yeah, that. <laughs>